Walk us through what the future of war looks like from a technological perspective. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the three chapters in the end of the book talk about each, uh, the, the revolution in each space. So, uh, robotics uh, is going to be a big, uh, obviously, big one. We're just, as we're seeing it in the domestic economy. So, uh, drones were just the leading edge of what you're going to see. You're going to see, of course, much more advanced drones, uh, and they're going to be based. Uh, uh, on sea as well as land, but think about the Google car, for example. So you have a Google car, it drives around, say it tries to drive around New York City. There's th tens of thousands of variables it has to analyze and process just driving down a city street. A tank has the same kind, could have the same kind of control software. It's actually much easier. It doesn't have to, you know, is that a grandma crossing the crosswalk against the light? What about the poodle? What about the bike? You know, he just has to say, there's enemy soldiers, allied soldiers, here's terrain, shoot the enemy, avoid getting hit. You know, there's a lot less variables involved with uh, military software for something like a tank. So you're going to start seeing a lot more robotics uh, for almost every kind of ground vehicle. You're going to see uh, robots take over the functions of crew and naval vessels. So in the civilian economy, for example, uh, people who are in this industry think within 10 years all cargo vessels on the high seas will be basically robotic. Uh, naval vessels and submarines for the hardest missions going closest to the enemy will be robotic. And then um, I think you're also going to see space take a big uh, role. I mean, space is already important. It sits behind a lot of the technological revolution we're enjoying now. Uh, you know, sensors and reconnaissance, high-speed communications of uh, data, uh, think about a lot of the uh, beneficial things that drones have brought, you know, with precision bombing after long surveillance, so you hit the target with the minimum amount of collateral damage. That's all made possible by space and space satellites. I think you're going to see uh, uh, weapons based in space, and you're going to see more combat possibly in space with anti-satellite weapons. The Chinese have already tested an anti-satellite weapon. So you're going to see, and then the third area, which we're not going to physically see, but is going to come along, of course, is cyber. So uh, one example we talked about is the Stuxnet virus, which was used to delay the Iranian nuclear program by several years. I think the United States has been on the receiving end of a kind of low-intensity cyber war by China and Russia. I think the United States is going to eventually have to retaliate and use its own cyber weapons to deter future attacks like the ones we've seen. Be sure to check out John's book, Striking Power, How Cyber, Robots, and Space Weapons Change the Rules of War.